live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Informatica World 2018. Brought to you by Informatica. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE here at Informatica World 2018 in Las Vegas. Cube's exclusive coverage. I'm John Furrier here for the wrap up of day two of Informatica World, wrapping up the show coverage. Uh, Peter Burris has been my co-host uh, all week. Chief Analyst at Wikibon.org, SiliconANGLE, and theCUBE. And Jim Kobelius, lead researcher on AI analytics, big data for Wikibon, SiliconANGLE, and theCUBE as well. Guys, let's, let's kind of uh, analyze and, and uh, dissect what we heard from the conversations, Peter and, and Jim. Uh, we heard from their customers, we heard from their executive management, top partners, and their top executives. So interesting, and Jim, you've been at the analysts' one-on-ones, the keynotes. Um, Good show. I thought, you know, I thought it was you know, well done, the messaging, again, continuing the brand, the 25th anniversary of Informatica, which, you know, I, that's okay for me, but it's really not 25 years old. It's literally like five years old. <laughs> when the private equity came in, they took the legacy and made it new. Well, they're a continually renewed company. They're a very different company from what they were even 10 years ago, and they've got a, a fairly aggressive roadmap in terms of evolving uh, into the world of AI and so forth, so they, they continually renew. As every vendor that hopes to survive the you know, inflection points must. You know? Jim, what was your takeaway from your sessions? I mean, you saw the keynote, you saw the messaging, you had a chance to, to sit down one-on-one -on -one and, and ask some tough questions. You heard the hallway conversation amongst the other analysts and customers. What's your personal takeaway? My personal takeaway is that Informatica understands that their future must be in the cloud in a subscription model. That means they need to get closer to their core established cloud partners, Microsoft, Azure, uh, AWS, Google. At this show, Microsoft, they, the, the most important new announcements at this show were all about further integration of the new uh, ICCS, which is the Informatica, you know. Intelligent uh, cloud service. Integra integration and platform as a service offering into the Azure cloud. That was the most important new piece of news in terms of enabling their customers. They have many joint customers already to bring all of their Informatica assets more completely into the Azure cloud. That was quite important, but there was a lot of showing from AWS here on the main stage and so forth. And I, we expect further deepening of their, you know, Informatica footprint on AWS for th those customers. So A, Informatica's future and their customers' future is in public clouds, and I think Informatica knows that the prem-based deployments will decline over time, but there's, this will be over a- time, They're still good now, so the migration- Well, it's a hybrid cloud story. They have, Informatica, a strong hybrid cloud story in the same way that an IBM does or that a Hortonworks does because most of their customers will have hybridized multi-cloud models for deployment of this technology for the long term, really, with a, but with an emphasis on more public deployments and I think it's understood. Peter, what's your thoughts? You had some great observations and, and questions I was listening to. You highlighted some of the digital business imperatives that you've been observing and researching and reporting on with the team, but also these guys have been doing it themselves any takeaways from you on any change of you know, landscape on digital business, the role of data, the role of the asset? What's your thoughts on, the, on, on that? Yeah, I, I think, I think uh, if, we, if we look at what, you know, the, the 25 year history, and, and Jim mentioned it, there have been a lot of inflection points. The thing that's distinguished Informatica for years is that it always was a company that sought to serve underserved data requirements. So it started out in when Relational database was the rage. It started out doing OLAP and new types of analytics. And then when that became, you know, data warehouse became what it was, it became a data integration issue. And you can kind of see Informatica has always tried to be one step ahead of the needs of hardcore data people. And I think we're seeing it, that here too, that they have got really, really smart people. They went private so that they could retool the company and they are introducing a portfolio that is very focused on the next needs, the next rounds of needs of data people. I think it's very Which is positive. a lot of cloud too. They're they a made data it. pipeline pure play well, par excellence. Well, I wouldn't say they're a data pipeline pure play. I think they're doing they're you know, the closest you know, to yeah. anybody out there. But, but I think I think the key thing is I think the key thing is that uh, the the uh, right now they're at the vanguard of talking about data as an asset, what it means to present data as an asset, tools that should provide for managing data as an asset, and they have all the pipeline and all the other stuff. 
you know, the catalog story that they have is very tied to that. Uh, the Claire story that they have is very tied to that. Mm -hmm. uh, data is very, very complex stuff, and it takes an enormous amount of time. checking the labor. boxes on some of the things that I've observed over the years, going back to the early Hadoop days. Streaming data requires some machine intelligence, obviously machine learning, AI, Claire, mm -hmm. check. Um, ingestion of data, managing, getting it all in a, an intelligent, not a data lake or data swamp, in a fabric that's going to be horizontally scalable. Yeah, absolutely. With APIs. Where horizontal scalable, scalable actually means something. It means expanding out through APIs and finding new ways of leveraging data. And I think we can make a prediction here based on four years of being here that Informatica will probably be at the vanguard of the next round of data needs. So today we're talking about cloud versus on-premise. I wouldn't be surprised if in a year or two years Informatica isn't talking more about how IoT data gets Mm -hmm. It gets yeah. incorporated and, and, and blockchain utilized. And, it's not, it's, and it's blockchain. Not been, yeah, IoT was not mentioned, nor was blockchain. I think those are kind of significant deficiencies in terms of what we're hearing at this show from Informatica in terms of strategic direction. Well, they had a but lot I of media. Well, hold, hold on, that, that, that's will, I expect to see more of that in coming hold on, years. Hold on. Well, that's a double-edged sword. When the hype's not there, they have a lot of sizzle and steak. So they got a lot of. When I say I mean, deficiencies, I mean in terms of them messaging. strategic discussions of where they're going. Okay, so I got to ask would, you. I would like to have heard, heard more I, of I would, Peter's discussion. I would too. Let's get to that in a second. But I want to get your reaction on the whole enterprise catalog piece. Yeah. Pretty much promoted by Jerry Held, founder of Ingress, legend in the industry, Bruce Chisholm, really pumping that up. Their quote was, "This is probably the most important product." Now. Is, 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 that, is, that, is that a board perspective bias, or you, is that really something that you guys believe? That's really organic. Metadata management is their core competency, of all, and really their core asset inside of all their, their applications at, at, at Informatica, and that's what the big data catalog is all about. It's not just a data catalog, it's a metadata catalog for data discovery, you know, and so forth. Everything that is done inside of the Informatica portfolio requires a, a central metadata repository. And I think, and it, well, not only do I think, we, Wikibon, our recent report on the big data market focused on the big data catalog as being one of the key pieces of infrastructure going forward in multi-cloud. You know, there's not just Informatica, there's Alation, and there's yeah. Cloudera and Hortworks and IBM and others that are going deep on their big data catalogs. So That'll you see that's important. a flagship product for these guys. Oh, well, yeah. let's put it this way. Look, I, AI, AI has been around since the late 1940s. The algorithms for doing AI 50s. had been around so the, f okay. Okay. <laughs> 40s, 50s, but the algorithms have been around for cards. years. <laughs> but the point is, is that what's occurred recently is the introduction of technology that can actually run these algorithms, that can actually sustain the algorithms against very large volumes of data. So the technology's gotten to the point where you can actually do some of this stuff. Tech, you know, the, the catalog concept has been around for as long as database managers have been around. The problem was is that you could only build a catalog for just that database manager. The promise of building enterprise-wide catalogs, that dream has been in place for years. One of the worst two days of my life was <laughs> flying back from Japan into New York and sitting in an IBM information model meeting for analysts. It was absolute. <laughs> was that in the 40s or 50s? That was in, that was in the 80s. <laughs> it was absolute hell. But the point is, is that Informatica is now. It was a prodigy. Yeah, it was a prodigy. It, Informatica <laughs> is now bringing together a combination of technologies, including Claire, to make it possible to actually do catalog in a very active way. And that's trend setting. I think, and I think they're right too. I think that's clearly they make a good product calls. I got to say, you know, watching them over the five years, we've been cut. This is our fourth year covering Informatica World. Our first meeting with, um, you know, Anil when he was head chief product officer was 2014 at AWS reInvent. So we've seen the progression. They're right on track, and I think they have an opportunity with IoT and, and blockchain. But the question I want to ask you guys is: This event about 4,000 people, not a huge big data show, but it's really all about data. There's no distractions. Mm. And the fact that they can't even get a lot of IOT airtime means that the, the, there's been a lot of They're core really discussions. They're really focused. So this is not, like, really a, this is not like a strata where everyone's no. you know, marketing you know, some tool or platform. These guys are in, down and dirty with the products. They're really focused on their core opportunities. And you know, like I, you know, Peter was saying, they're really focused on, you know, they're, they're, they're the premier, I see the data pipeline solution or platform vendor. The data pipeline is the center of the AI revolution. And so, you know, the, in many ways, all of the forces, all the trends have converged to the advantage 
of Informatica as being the core go-to vendor for our complete yeah. data pipeline so for all your requirements, including machine learning development. But there's so another, does, does this show become John, the next, next there's show? One, so there's one thing, there's one thing, one more thing. We have, we didn't hear blockchain, we didn't hear IoT, although yeah. I bet there's a lot of conversation one-on-ones in in between customers and, and Informatica about some of those things. But there's one other thing we didn't hear, which I think is very telling and speaks to some of our trends. We didn't hear open source. Yeah. Open source was not once mentioned on theCUBE, except maybe you mentioned it once. You're right. Now, if we think about where the, date, the big data market was forged and where it was going to always remain, was, was going to be this big, huge open source play. And that has not happened. Informatica, by saying we're going to have a great individual product and we're going to have a great portfolio that works together, is demonstrating that, there, that the way to show how the new compute model is going to work is to take a coherent, Integrated, focused approach and how to do it's it. It's interesting. I mean, we could we could dissect this open source as a great <laughs> observation because is there really open source needed if you have a pipeline of things? I'd much rather have a question about open data, mm. which I think the Azure deal points to is getting into hybrid cloud as fast as possible in a console. To me, that is so much more powerful than open source. Open you know, APIs. Open, open, API open APIs where I cannot get locked into Azure. Look, I think so open source. Me, I think open source is still important, but I'll bet you that the I, open I just, source. If you start looking at what these guys are doing and others like them are doing, my guess is that we'll see open source vendors start saying, oh, so that's how you're going to do catalog. Okay, great, well, let's take an open source approach to doing that. And, you know, Informatica is going to have to stay in some, front of that. They might be using some open source. It might not be a top line message, but, yeah. let's, let's, but let's go to the next level. Let's go, okay, let's go critical analysis on, on, on Informatica. What does Informatica need to do? Obviously, they got a tailwind. They got great timing with GDPR. You couldn't ask for a better time to showcase engineering data, governance, and, you know, and application integration across clouds than now, right? So they're in a good spot. Where are they strong? What do they need to work on? Well, okay, let's just focus on GDPR because it is three days from now for the, the compliance date. Um, GDPR, I mean, there's, Informatica has had some good announcements at this show and prior to this show in terms of tools for discovery of all your PII and so forth so you can catalog it in the big data catalog. Um, what needs to be built up by them and uh, other vendors as well is a more fully fleshed out GDPR compliance platform or portfolio or ecosystem. There's a lot of things that are needed like a standardized consent portal so the customer, your customers can go in and look up their PII in your big data catalog and indicate their consent or not, or you know, their withdrawal of consent for you to use particular pieces of data for you know, that, that's a, Hortonworks a few weeks ago at their data works in Berlin, they made an announcement related to such a portal. What I'm getting is that more vendors, including us, every big data catalog vendor needs to have in their portfolio, and will, within the, I'm predicting within the next two years, a consent portal as one of several important components to enable not just GDPR compliance, but really compliance with any such privacy or subject mandate. Or subject portal, a subject, subject portal. portal. That offers consent that then is yeah, verified. For example, so here, here, here's what I'll that say. needs to be open source. Here's too. what I'll say, John. I would add, here's, here, so, and, and, and uh, we, we had a conversation about it with Amit during the, the chief product Mid officer, yeah. or the president, chief product officer. Um, I think that if, is that what, that Informatica, similar to what we think, is on the right path. The world is moving to a, an acknowledgement that data has to be treated as an asset, that tooling is required so that you can do so, and that you have to reinstitutionalize work, reorganize work, and rethink culturally what it means to use data as an asset. With penalties down the road, obviously on the horizon. Penalties and, and you know, proximate, and you know, proximate like GDPR is yeah. often proximate, yeah. but also, you know, big, like you're out of business yeah. if you don't exactly. do this kind of penalties. Yeah. Yeah. So, Super important. But, but one of the things that, one of the things that's going to determine, that's going to gate their growth, is how many people can they, will actually end up utilizing these technologies. And so if I were to have one thing that I think they absolutely have to do, We've, we're coming out of a world that's focused on, we use process and process models and process-oriented tools to build applications. We're moving into a world where we use data, data methods, data models to build applications. This notion of a data-first world as opposed to a process-first world, yeah. Informatica has to take a lead in what it means to be data-first, tooling for data-first, building applications that are data-first, and very importantly, 
That's how you're going to grow your well, user base. Accenture was really, um, uh, Sajiv was talking about data value, uh, data chain, data, right, data right, value chains right, or whatever right, you call right, them. Right. Data mm -hmm. supply no, chains. data supply chains. And I, th I think there's going to be a series of data supply chains that are going to be well, de well formed, well defined, and ones that are going to be dynamic. You're seeing it happening now. And related, actually that's an interesting discussion, data value chains, data supply chains, but really data monetization chains, the whole GDPR phenomenon is that your customer's PI is their property and that you need their consent to use it and then you know, to the extent that they give you consent, on some level, the customer is expecting a return of value to them. You know, yeah. m maybe monetization, maybe they make money well, from this you. Is, this but you got it, more enterprises have to start thinking of data as a product. And then they need to license the well, IP from whoever owns it. This is a huge and, and issue. And vendors like Informatica yeah. need to understand that phenomenon and bake it, as it were, into their solution portfolio. Either they're going to be on the right side of history on that or the wrong side, because yeah. like, you're right, and what you just highlighted Peter's point, which is, it's that data direction, not the process, to your point. Data first. If I own the yeah. data, it's got to be very dynamic. Okay, my final comment would be, um, and I mentioned this last night uh, when we were talking, is that I think that things are clicking for them. I think they got the tailwinds. I think they're smart enough on the product side. The trend is their friend. They got the cloud deals in place. Mm -hmm. They're at a nice layer in the stack where they can be that Switzerland. You got storage vendors underneath with a nice data layer. So in the position with coming over the top cloud native Kubernetes and well, containers. This is going to get messy. Fast. I didn't hear okay. Kubernetes at all at this show. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. This is going to be a <laughs> robust Switzerland model where they, I don't think they can handle the onboarding of partners. I think, I think they have a lot of partners now from their standpoint, but I think they might have an AWS factor where they're going to have to start thinking really hard about how to be efficient about onboarding partners. To your, to your point about adoption, this is going to be a huge issue that could make or break them. Mm. If they can scale the partnership model through the APIs, they can have a robust ecosystem. They can be then a, this show is 15,000. If they can be a magnet brand inside yeah. Azure or a magnet brand mm. inside AWS yes. for how you think about building new classes of value, applications yeah. and others, with a data first approach, then a lot of interesting things are going to happen. Yeah, they need to be a magnet brand to avoid getting disintermediated by their public cloud partners because yeah. Microsoft's and by got open a portfolio source, and by that storage with theirs, AWS and by all and kinds of built one. It's like they're, they're everybody the wants of being this. disintermediated. Yeah. Everybody wants this. Yeah, everybody wants them. This, okay. not them. This is awesome, guys. Great job, Peter. Great to host with you, Jim. Great to have you on, make an appearance in between your uh, meetings, one-on-ones, and the analyst stuff. I'm Great a busy stuff. man. It's theCUBE here, wrapping up day two of coverage <laughs> here at Informatical 2018. The trend is their friend. Data's at the center of the value proposition, more strategic ever. Data engineering, governments, applications, all happening right now. Regulations on the horizon. A cultural shift, cultural shift happening. And we're out here in the open doing it, sharing the data with you. Thanks for watching Informatica World 2018.